Cool. Well, I'm excited to do some meta yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about or touch on before we jump into that? No, I just appreciate you offering to teach me this form of meta. I'm uh, excited to see what it's all about. Sweet. Yeah, I'm excited too. I've, I've been, um, you know, as I watched you do in your, um, your meta, your weekly meta practice group. Um, yeah, I just thought since you're looking to do and teach a lot of different forms of meta, that this would be a fun one to, to offer. Definitely. Um, yeah. And maybe, maybe I could say to you a little bit about the, um, the back background for this, these practices, mm -hmm. because they're, uh, they're connected to the social meditation, um, approach that Kenneth Folk developed originally. And he, um, he started with the social noting practice, you know, taking Mahasi Sayadaw's uh, mental noting and doing it out loud with other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did that for a number of years, as did Emily. And then we, we kind of, as we got more familiar with the practice and fell in love with the interpersonal practices, we, um, we thought, well, why can't we do this with metta too? You know, take the traditional metta practice and, and do it out loud. Mm. Um, but the problem we found is like um, traditional metta, you know, as you as you probably know, at least how it's taught in the insight tradition, it's very complex. Mm. You know, you're working with a, different categories of beings in a particular sequence, and you're usually cycling through a bunch of different phrases, um, and then you're directing those phrases as you as you loop through them. You're directing them to these different categories. So it's actually pretty dang complicated compared to noting, mm. where you're just like using a word or two to describe your experience. Mm. Um, so we kind of had to break meta down uh, in into into more basic forms, like down to like a single phrase, before we felt like we could build it up to that kind of. Um, level and and for that reason i actually for two reasons i think social meta is more effective than the traditional meta that i learned um one because it's simpler so it's easier for people to to, to pick up and learn uh, especially if they're new and then two because it's done out loud with other people you actually get the benefit like a lot more benefit of hearing other people wishing you well or wishing beings well or whatever mm -hmm. and that i think that actually has a, an effect on the practice most people report that mm -hmm. that it actually um, brings the practice alive mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. so that's Definitely. kind of the background yeah cool thank you for sharing that yeah yeah so just in the last few months i think we've finally cracked the the meta social meta <laughs> nut um mm -hmm. as it were and um, the first practice that we came up with um, is called May, May It Arise. Hmm. Um, and I'll share a link here to our um, social meditation guide so you can check this out with me. And this practice is really simple. Um, it's, it's, we consider it a basic practice because of its hmm. simplicity. And um, the frame of the practice is just may blank arise. Mm. And then you're filling in the blank. You can fill in the blank with in a, in a number of ways. I'm going to keep it simple for, for this demonstration uh, and just pick one, pick one thing to fill in. Mm. And uh, the way we do this, we, we use a, a word or two to fill in the blank and what makes it meta is the words, you know, what it is that we're wishing for to arise. Cause you could do this practice with other things as well. You know, you could be like, okay, I'm going to explore fear for a while. May, may terror and fear arise. Okay. <laughs> Let me see what this is like. Uh -huh. um, but here instead it's like may, may whatever it is that we want to cultivate or develop or, or um, bring about, you know, in, in the, in terms of open heart qualities, um, may that arise. Um, so as a facilitator, like if I were facilitating this, there's a couple ways I could do that. I could, I could just pick something, you know, uh, often I, I like to work with the phrase loving awareness, may loving awareness arise. Um, or I could 
pull the group quickly, you know, throw a couple options out and then see which one rises to the top and then pick that and then work with that. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, I'd, what I'd love to do is just ask you, you know, if there's um, a phrase or a word, a word or two that you resonate with right now in terms of your meta practice, like, is there something that we could cultivate together? Mm -hmm. um, I'd be happy to, to go with whatever you're interested in. Mm. Yeah. Um, and you, can, think, you can think about it. You don't have to answer the second. <laughs> no, I, I think um, the two words that came to mind are happiness and friendship. Okay. And so for this, for, okay, so for the purpose of this practice, it's one to two words. But if it's two words, it's kind of like a, um, not an, not an and mm -hmm. between them. Yeah, either of them would be fine. Okay, so your call, your call on that. Mm. Let's go with friendship then. Okay. So may friendship arise. Yeah, and that's I like that because you know friendliness is another translation mm -hmm. for meta. Yeah. Okay. So may friendship arise. So so that'll be our frame uh, mm -hmm. that we'll work with, and then. Here, in terms of the order, uh, with two players, um, I often find doing a sequential order, just taking turns, is nice. Mm -hmm. But you can do it spontaneously as well. Mm. Um, you know, as you feel moved. Mm -hmm. um, when when I do this practice spontaneously, I usually suggest people just say "May it, it arise," mm -hmm. since it's less syllables, mm -hmm. and you know, it's a little easier um, in the spontaneous mode if you're not using a whole lot of language, because then mm -hmm. people start to kind of trip over each other a bit mm -hmm. um and you could do this practice too with as many people as you like uh, on zoom i typically go with three to four people breakout groups because it seems like it's easier to track you know whose turn it is it is mm -hmm. um but like in a physical room if you're doing this you know in a like in a physical space you could have a circle of 20 people and just go around the circle so long mm -hmm. as people can hear each other and track mm -hmm. whose turn it is it works fine. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's yeah, pertinent to this practice. I thought maybe we could just do like a short, like a short, like five or 10 minutes just to get a taste of it. Sure. That sounds great. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, well, for the purpose of this thing, let's do, let's do a shorter period. Um, that way we have time to cover more material. Does that work? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, cool. Um, so we'll go for five minutes. And um, yeah, so the basic instructions are kind of just may friendship arise. And we'll take turns saying that. Um, with social meta, I found it's nice to emphasize the a little bit of space between phrases. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in noting, that's not really, it's not really important. Mm -hmm. But in mm -hmm. this practice, it seems useful. So people have a chance to um, to let in the well wishes of the mm -hmm. previous person. So we're instead of just rushing in. Mm -hmm. So we're alternating saying the phrase may it arise, intending it to refer to friendship, and then pausing in between our phrases. Is that correct? No. So here we'll just say may friendship arise. Okay. If you're doing it spontaneously, you can say may it arise instead mm -hmm. if you like. Mm -hmm. um, that's fine. And, um, but, but the main, but the main phrase is may friendship arise and we'll just take turns. Okay, if you're cool. doing it spontaneously, that's where the may it arise can come in more, um, because it keeps it simple, you know, mm -hmm. it keeps it kind of minimal syllables. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Um, okay, cool. Um, yeah. Any other questions mm, no. about the instructions? Okay, cool. Well, May it arise. <laughs> May friendship arise. May friendship arise. May friendship arise. May friendship arise. May 
may friendship arise. May friendship arise. May friendship arise. May friendship arise. May friendliness arise. May friendliness arise. May friendship arise. May friendship arise. May it arise. May friendship arise. May friendliness arise. May friendship arise. May friendship arise. May friendship arise. May it arise. May friendship arise. May friendship arise. May friendship arise. All right. Hmm. So um, the way the way I usually offer social meditation is I start um, just by setting up the practice, um, making sure I answer any questions people have about the instructions. Then we do the practice. Then we talk about how it went. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be like very brief, you know, just like 
people could share a word or two on their experience. Like they could say there was friendship and happiness, hmm. uh, or there was confusion and anger or whatever. Hmm. Uh, or, or, or like in this case, I would love to just open it up and hear any reflections or thoughts or hmm. questions that arose, um, doing the practice. Hmm. And we can just talk about it mm -hmm. for a little bit. Yeah, it was just delightful. Uh, <laughs> um, felt a lot of love and happiness and mostly was um, feeling friendship towards you and also towards Emily and grateful mm. to you for sharing this with me and just for the kind of connection that we have that you would make that kind of an offer and um, a lot mm. of admiration for you. And it felt quite nice in my body to... Uh, feel friendship for you. Mm, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I felt, it's interesting, I felt some initial resistance to um, n having the aspiration just be about you and I. Mm -hmm. And I sort of immediately went to more like universal friendship, like may it mm -hmm. arise for everybody. And then I found that that ended up coming back to you and I at the end. It was like, and it felt I felt like a connection to the on the personal level of, mm. of that wish too. Um, that was interesting. Beautiful. I noticed that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um, you know the other thing the other thing that I uh, I try to emphasize when I train facilitators in social meditation is to as long as you're with a group of people who are fairly self um, autonomous. You know, like they, they have a sense of agency and, you know, like the relatively mature people. I, I like to explain the instructions, but not enforce them. Hmm. So, so that gives people space to do something other than what's instructed. Mm -hmm. um, so like I, I, I demonstrated that when I said, you know, if may friendliness arise, it's like that mm -hmm. wasn't the instruction, but for me, that's, that's where I wanted to go. I wanted to explore that and see what mm. it, see what it felt like. And it felt related. So I just did it. Mm. Um, and I, I try to create that kind of space for folks when doing these practices where I, I just want to make sure they understand the instructions, but I don't want to be like the daddy figure who's trying to enforce things and, mm -hmm. you know, which, which can really happen a lot, I think in spiritual contexts where people's autonomy and agency is kind of taken away in the teacher student or whatever the community practitioner relationship mm -hmm. and that's just for me a value um but that said i think there's some context where it makes sense to try to be a little bit more directive um mm -hmm. or to correct people uh i had one person i think i mentioned her when we spoke last time who brought this into pr into the prison network mm -hmm. and she found in that context given her professional experience that that it didn't make sense to just let people do whatever they wanted. Mm. Uh, and I said, okay, well, I don't really know, you know, I, you, you're the one who's an expert, you know, who knows about this. Mm -hmm. I, I try, you know, I trust you as a facilitator to figure out how to adapt these things to your, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to your audience. So mm. anyway, that's just mm. kind of how I tend to do things. And it's nice too, because it gives space for emergence, mm. um, for creative emergence to happen and for people to like, feel like they don't have to like, uh, become one with the social group, which can be triggering at times, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a trauma informed, uh, principle as well, I guess. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's interesting. It reminds me that like in my own meta practice, um, mm -mm, I like to, when I'm sending meta to someone in particular, I like to feel into, uh, sense into the relationship at that time and the content of that relationship and use, rather than saying one phrase over and over again, I prefer to say mm -hmm. a lot of different phrases that relate uh -huh. to that relational context. Like, um, mm -hmm. I hope you find this experience fulfilling, or I hope you succeed at what you're doing right now, or I hope you feel loved in your relationships or whatever it is in that connection with that person mm -hmm. and use a lot mm -hmm. of different phrases that get at that content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you center it around the person and the relationship. And then it sounds like, like in my language, you, you use like a freestyle, mm -hmm. um, meta phrases, mm -hmm. just that's to exactly right. let it arise. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's great. Um, 
in this technique, you know, one of the options is freestyle as well. Mm -hmm. So that would be another way of facilitating this. You could say, you know, fill when it's your turn, fill in the blank with a word or two, whichever word or two you like. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's different than what you're describing, but that's that can mm -hmm. you can bring in that sort of open choice making, mm -hmm. you know, into into the into the practice as well. Mm. Yeah. Cool. That makes sense. I like it. Um, I like the I hope too as a kind of starting um, place. It's different than the traditional May, mm -hmm. you know, May blank, yeah. blank. Yeah, it's nice. Um, cool. So, ready for the next round? Yeah, definitely. Okay, sweet. So, okay, so I want to keep keep going with this practice and explore some other options just to give you a sense as you offer this with for others, like, you know, what are the different possibilities? Mm -hmm. And if you look at this, um, at the website that I shared with you, the, um, here, I'm actually just share my screen real quick. Let me see. Oh, I'm not the host. That's right. Oh, I can... I, I, uh, I gave over my host status. Huh. May, may it arise. <laughs> may it re-arise. Uh -huh. There you go. <laughs> That's okay. You can't. Okay, great. Okay, perfect. So now I can share my screen. Okay, great. So um, so I just wanted to highlight, especially for those that are watching later. Um, so in this kind of the core instructions here, there's a bunch of different options for how to fill in the blank. We just did the pick one. Um, but you could also, as a facilitator, you could say, okay, uh, I want to give people a choice. Like I want to give people a few options, like multiple, like a multiple choice problem is A, B, C, or D, which one do you want to pick? Um, this could work great if you're working with like a specific model, like the four measurables, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, let's pick one of the four measurables, you know, loving kindness, compassion, equanimity, or empathetic joy. When it's your turn, you can pick. Um, Another option is you could work uh, through a sequence or succession of things. You could say, okay, we're going to spend a minute on loving kindness, doing that, and then we're going to shift to this and then shift to that and spend you know, a certain amount of time working with a particular um, particular word or words. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also loop through. So you know, you could imagine looping through the Brahma Viharas. You know, each person takes, when it's their turn, they, they pick the next in the sequence. And you just kind of are, are sort of looping as you go, or you could, or you could sort of set a, a category, like a fixed category. So like, we're going to uh, invite anything to arise, which is a positive mind state, let's say. So a, anything you can think of that's a positive mind state, you could fill in the blank with that. Um, or you, you could be freestyle, like we were just talking about, like anything, anything goes. Uh, so long as it's a word or two, that's the compression, we're keeping it. Compress. This could be a breath or two, too. In some practices, there's a, you know, there's an option for longer um, sharing. And this one, we try to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so those are some of the different options. And what I was thinking is maybe we could do uh, in the next round, we could do like, uh, like kind of loop through the Brahma Viharas. Mm -hmm. And then after we do that, so this would be now, now we're getting a little advanced here. We're going to chain two practices together or link them together. So we'll have two phases. So the first phase, we'll, we'll do this. May, may um, the Brahma Viharas arise or the four measurables arise. So we could loop through one at a time. Mm -hmm. what, tell me, tell me the, um, Tashin, what, uh, order and translations do you use of the Brahma Viharas? Because there's, I know there's different orders depending on tradition and different, of course, there's many different translations. Do you have mm -hmm. like a, a favorite? Because we could use that. Well, internally in my own mind, I refer to them as in this order and using the names Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upeka. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I sure, think... we can use the Pali. Okay, great. So metta karuna mudita upeka. So that so that the traditional um, order there, the first turning. Yeah, mm -hmm. Great, great. What other um, orders have you heard it presented in? Uh, the second in the second turning teachings, they put upeka first, ah. and then they do metta karuna mudita. I see. Um, yeah, that's something I learned from Ken McLeod, um, huh. and that's it's really interesting working with the different sequence I found is kind of like, mm. oh yeah, mm. there's a different, different way to do this. Just yeah, out of curiosity, equanimity. what, what translations do you like? 
Um, yeah, good question. I, um, it depends. Um, sometimes if I'm doing like the, I think about it in terms of the two different turnings, usually like if I'm doing a first turning thing, I often use sort of the translations that I learned, like loving kindness, compassion. I like empathetic joy and, um, equanimity, but sometimes I'll also use loving awareness as a translation for Metta. And, um, and then sometimes I like to play around actually with like giving people the option to pick the translation they'd like. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of more open in that way. People can kind of explore translations. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, when I do second turning, I use um, big mind for equanimity for Upeka. Um, I use big heart for met for my tree or Metta. I use great compassion for Karuna and great joy for um, Mudita. Mm, that's so beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I like I like those too. That's mm -hmm. that's more kind of based on my experience with Big Mind and the Zen mm -hmm. Zen tradition, which is mm -hmm. you know part of that second turning. Mm -hmm. So I kind of go with the translations that fit the the turning. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go with the we'll go with the um, Pali. Mm -hmm. which is also really beautiful. So I get the um, looping, but you said at some point we'll switch to multiple choice. Is that right? Where we just pick one that we want that feels alive at that time? Yeah, so so part of what I was thinking here is we could, um, so the first phase we can do, um, do this and just take turns looping through them. Mm -hmm. So I go, you go, I go, you go. Mm -hmm. And then um, the second phase I was thinking we could do is explore this practice, Pith mm -hmm. Metta. Mm -hmm. And that's where you just boil it down to a word or two mm -hmm. um, and instead of having any kind of phrasing around the words. It's so just, you just the core of the or Mudita. Or... Yeah, it, exactly, exactly. And here I thought we could go spontaneous. You know, we Perfect. could shift into spontaneous mode so you can kind of get a sense for what that's like. Great. And, and I always men mention to people, like, you know, because <laughs> – this can be confusing. Sometimes um, in this practice, we're aspiring, mm -hmm. you know, we're wishing for something to arise. And then sometimes it's actually arising. Mm -hmm. You know, we're actually realizing it in that moment, as you know, um, from doing metta practice, you get in the groove and you're, it's, it's effortless. You're, you're just being it, you're radiating it. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I always like to highlight, you can, you, it can be either. It's okay if you're not feeling it and you're just wishing for it to be so. And it's okay if you're realizing it. Mm -hmm. And you're just emanating it, you know, mm -hmm. you're just being it. Um, mm -hmm. Either one is fine. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. And so here we'll we'll continue with the same. Um, we'll, we'll we'll shift to multiple choice, so mm -hmm. so we can pick any of the Brahma Viharas. Uh, and how about this? Would you be open to picking any translations as well? Yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. So we'll do any any of the four uh, Brahma Viharas and any translation we like. Mm -hmm. in the pith metta phase beautiful and in the first phase we'll we'll stick with the the poly and the Excellent. traditional the first turning sequence okay cool Fun. um so what i was thinking we could do like five minutes of each and just kind of uh what i'll do to mark the transition between the phases is you'll just hear me go out of order mm -hmm. uh, or start using language that's <laughs> different um and that'll mark the the transition perfect Okay. So any other questions? Before no, we that, uh, that seems very straightforward and fun. Okay. Looking forward to it. Let's do it. May the four measurables arise. May meta arise. May Karuna arise. May Mudita arise. May Upeka arise.
may metta arise. May Karuna arise. May Mudita arise. May Upeka arise. May Metta arise. May Karuna arise. May Mudita arise. May Upeka arise. May Metta arise. May Karuna arise. May Mudita arise. May Upeka arise. May Metta arise. May Karuna arise. May Mudita arise. May Upeka arise. Loving kindness. Friendship. Compassion. Deep love.
loving awareness. Overwhelming joy. Big heart. Delight. Joy. Love. Smile. Gratitude. Compassion. Calm. Goodwill. Peace. Peace. Deep understanding. Relaxation. Calm. Open love. Great faith. Boundless love. Empathetic joy. Mudita. Love. Acceptance. Care. Tenderness. Appreciation. Loving kindness. The Brahma Viharas. Good ending. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, what was that? So much fun. Uh, it's really enjoyable. I love how um, mm, there's so many different flavors of positive experience that can be cultivated. And mm. I felt like we could really explore that and 
move between them and I liked that it was social like we were dancing together mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I, I noticed I've noticed uh, doing this a few times this practice where there's like an open translation on the Brahma Viharas that it really ends up being just like freestyle love mm -hmm. <laughs> just mm -hmm. kind of it, it uh, evolves into that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to say devolves it evolves into that yeah naturally yeah. interesting yeah so it help, helps me understand the Brahma Viharas better like it's they're not they aren't so fixed categorically Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that's been my experience of them uh, just very yeah. open and a whole spectrum of positivity that's all worth cultivating mm -hmm. yeah nice and how, how was the um the spontaneous uh pith meta and the transition you know from the may it arise to that what was that like for you mm -hmm. freeing uh, yeah, I think very early on in the first half, I realized that the way we were doing it, because there were two of us that I'd, we'd repeatedly be saying the same two. And, um, interestingly, right. like Karuna and Upeka, I feel like are harder for me to cultivate than Metta and Mudita. Um, mm. so I felt a little bit. It wasn't like that was overwhelming or hard, but it was just, um, I found myself, it was easier to feel meta throughout that section than the words that I was actually saying. Um, mm -hmm. I, I could cultivate Upeka, but not really Karuna during that time. And um, mm. so in any case, it, it felt um, just a little bit more open and uh, connected to my own experience when we, switched into sort of a freestyle mode yeah yep yeah when I, when I facilitate these practices I, I usually like to start with like more structure and constraints and then if I'm if I'm linking other practices just open you know kind of that move from more form to less form seems mm -hmm. to be natural yeah definitely yep yep cool great mm -hmm. glad glad to hear that went well mm-hmm yeah, it was, it was nice. I have what one practice experience? that I, yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was really sweet. Um, I, you know, the first part we we're working with the poly terms, um, you know, I had a lot of resistance to using poly for a long time, you mm -hmm. know, kind of like, um, like wanting to, to speak in my own, like wanting to speak in my own language, uh, type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I've come around, you know, on that. Um, so, but it's interesting because of all the years of not, of intentionally not doing it, it's, I think it's, uh, I've noticed it's a little bit harder to connect through those words to this, to the spirit underlying mm -hmm. them. Um, so I noticed that, um, that was interesting. And um, yeah, I, like I said, I found, I, I wasn't surprised that we stopped using we went, we went from more of an open translation of the four to a freestyle mode. Like, and it was kind of a gradual thing that just sort of naturally happened. And I wasn't surprised at all by that because I've seen that happen, but it was cool to see it happen again. Mm -hmm. um, and to like, for me as a, you know, facilitator, someone creating these practices, it's like, oh yeah, that, that tells me this is a natural, it's a natural flow. And I, I, tr I try to look for those and align the cons the practice and the design of the practice and the way that I facilitate it with the natural flows so that it's like, oh, this is just a way of formalizing what's natural. Um, so that was like further validation for me mm -hmm. yeah, that this is um, kind of a natural thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if I, if and when I facilitate this, I wouldn't use the poly terms, uh, I think, just because we're practicing with me here. It's like, that would be the natural yeah. thing for me to start with. But, um, yes. I, I think that that probably wouldn't resonate for 95% of people that I would facilitate it to. So I'd start with English translations, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, working with whoever you got in front of you. Exactly. 
Yeah, classic Buddhist principle. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, cool, cool. Well, let's see. Maybe we could uh, close with a practice. Great. Okay. Um, okay, I'd like to share a practice with you that was developed by one of my um, students and friends, uh, Francis Lacoste. Mm -hmm. I think you'll like this one. It's a gratitude practice. And I'll share the screen again. It's called Social Thanksgiving. Mm. You got to keep in mind, Francis is Canadian. So I think this is a, it's kind of like a humorous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a nice humorous uh, play on play on the word. Um, although Canadians have a Thanksgiving as well, as I understand. But uh, I don't think they take it quite as seriously as us Americans. Uh -huh. um, so... So in this technique, the purpose, we foster gratitude by taking turns, finding one thing we're grateful for. So the frame of this practice is I'm grateful for blank. And here, um, in terms of what you fill in for the blank, it's, it's freestyle, it's open. And the only really constraint here is that we're using one breath to do it. So the whole phrase will be one breath. Mm -hmm. um, um, so that helps, that helps kind of, yeah, create some con constraint around it so that people aren't just kind of writing a writing a, a book mm -hmm. and uh maybe it, it avoids the the potential for someone to kind of hog the space mm -hmm. <laughs> um but also i think what i like about the one breath uh compression is that it also it 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 synchronizes the um the phrase and, and the uh the wish with and the reflection with the, the breathing process that so keeps it embodied. Mm -hmm. um, and here, because it's a longer thing, we 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 do this one sequentially only. Mm -hmm. And you can do you know two or more people uh, doing this as well. And there's a thing we often use in social meditation called a safety release valve as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention this. If if you're never if you're ever not sure uh, what to say, then you can always say pass. Um, in this practice, you can also say, I'm grateful for the opportunity to pass, mm -hmm. kind of uh, just putting it in the in the phrase, in the frame. You can also say, thank you. Thank you is another good safety release valve note, mm -hmm. um, a way to continue cultivating that gratitude, but just um, without having to kind of come up with something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the basics. Any questions? Right. No, it seems pretty straightforward. And yeah, excited. Cool. And as I, I should mention too, as, as a facilitator, I often, or almost always, will demonstrate the practice as I'm explaining the instructions. So, you know, I'd, I'd say, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share these practices with you. Mm. I'm grateful for all the little kitties and puppies that live on my street mm. and are always out and about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the opportunity to stop demonstrating the practice and do the practice with you. Beautiful. <laughs> so there you go. Um, just a note, it can be helpful to demonstrate it so people mm -hmm. can see it, um, not just in abstract terms, but in first person terms. Mm. Cool. So um, let me propose this. How about uh, like a, another five minutes or so, and then we could have another, just a quick five minutes to wrap up and debrief. Perfect. Perfect. Sounds perfect. Okay. The whirlwind tour of social meta. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So social Thanksgiving. Hmm. I'm grateful for the kale that I pulled out of the garden this morning and blended into a smoothie. I'm grateful for your generosity in sharing these practices with me.
I'm grateful for the opportunity to pass. Thank you. I'm grateful for simple embodied presence. I'm grateful to Francis for developing this technique. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for all of the people that I've worked with and collaborated with who extend my understanding beyond me. I'm grateful that I give myself permission to move my body in ways that feel good when I meditate. Mm. Thank you. grateful for the air I'm breathing. I'm grateful for all of the wonderful plants and animals that sustain me. I'm grateful for the abundant love that I receive. I'm grateful for the opportunity to practice gratitude. I'm grateful that I had food to eat today. I'm grateful for silence. I feel grateful for creative commons. I'm grateful for my conceptual mind. I'm grateful you said that. I am grateful for the opportunity to practice with you today, Tashin. That was optional, but I like that one. Another classic Buddhist teaching tool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, how was that? Any comments, questions, sharing? Oh, I just love it. I, I enjoyed it. I love it. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really nice one especially good at the end of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like at the end of a retreat or group or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. I like it. I like it too, because it opens up, um, like a lot of our practices are really short and to the point, but that one was one of the first that was contributed to our guide that, um, that kind of opened up the compression a bit and gave more space for people's stories and their, you know, the conceptual mind to be present. And I, I so appreciate that because it gives people an opportunity to uh, develop more fluency with their experience rather than just getting good at operating at that really basic level, which is great. I mean, that's important training, but like then, uh, you know, Kenneth Folk, one of my teachers, he talks about fluency as a core value of his, you know, wanting to help people learn how to become fluent 
in working with different levels of abstraction mm. and um, being able to move in and out. Um, so I love that practice because for me, it, it sort of opened up the frame of social meditation to become like a clear way of becoming more fluent by opening up the, the space in which people could share. Mm. Mm. So yeah, props to Francis for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, before we go, can you remind me, you've told me before, and we've discussed this before, but just to have it in this recording, um, can you tell me about the, like the licensing of these techniques and, and how they should be taught yeah. with that? Yeah, that's great. I appreciate you bringing that up because I forgot to mention it. Um, yeah, so you and I, we had a great conversation recently. I, I pulled out a little bit of the clip um, where, I, where I talked about open source Dharma. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could we could link to that. Um, mm -hmm. But but the basic idea here is that these practices, all of them are offered on the social meditation guide, socialmeditation.guide. They're all offered using a Creative Commons uh, by Attribution 4.0 International License. Mm -hmm. And all that means is that you're, uh, anyone is welcome to share them, um, to use them for any purpose, to remix them, to adapt them. You can even include them in something that you're charging for, a commercial project. And you can do all of that without permission. Uh, you don't have to email me or email Buddhist Geeks or you know you don't have to be in contact to get permission. You can just do it uh, with the one caveat that you need to attribute uh, legally, uh, where the practice comes from that mm -hmm. you've you know, using, remixing, adapting, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's just a way of honoring the the source lineage mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. So that's Beautiful. it. So these practices, as I shared them, you could see in the bottom of the page you saw mm -hmm. uh, who it was by attribution, and that that's just to help highlight. If you're using the guide, you can know who came up with the practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's it. Yeah, I, I definitely want to be sharing these and facilitating them and practicing them. So, uh, and I, I, you know, as I've mentioned previously, very much a fan of the open source Dharma frame that you uh, have created. And um, so want to honor that if and when I do facilitate these techniques. Cool. Yeah, as you like. Um... You know, there, there's another part of the open source Dharma frame where, you know, we, we could have said it's a share alike mm -hmm. license as well, where you have to share it in the same way. Mm -hmm. But we've, we're kind of, we kind of decided to, to like, just let it be free and see, see what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, you're welcome to do that. Um, but it's not required. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. cool. Well, thank you, Tashin. Great to get to hang. I'm glad this was recorded in case it's helpful yeah. to anybody else. Definitely. Um, yeah. Thank you yeah. again for offering to share this with me and um, really, really enjoyed pleasure. it. So thank you.